Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm from the northeastern north Quebec, um, part of the community named Kawawachimach. And for for what I talk today is about the Muscapi observation of impacts and climate, social, environmental changes in the caribou in the Canadian subarctic identification priority of the adaptation strategies. And, and there are two, two parts that I want to talk about, climate change and caribou. Like indicated on the slide, it's the Canadian Arctic and Subarctic by 2000, 2070. Climate models program increases four Celsius in temperature and five to 15 percent in precipitation by 2070. Canada has warmed more than by more than 1.3. Since 1948, the rate of warming is about twice the global average. And for the caribou, the, the migratory caribou forest and torcat mountain herd, and the population census done for the George River in 1993, there are about 775 heads. 2001, 300, 385,000, 2010, 74,000, 2012, in the fall, less than 27,000, which is a dramatic drop for George River. So that's a slide of that. And the other one is the adaptation Climate Adaptation and Caribou Project. We, we worked on identification impacts of social, environmental, and climate on caribou, the land, and the Scapi Society Development Climate Change Adaptation Tool to that nation. The methodology, 2011-2012, we had community workshops participatory mapping with the elders and other young hunters, questionnaires like observation pertaining climate, caribou, personal hunting, living and eating habits, personal hunt pertaining to traditional food species, okay, which, which are mainly Canada geese and caribou, Precipitation of the younger generation's habits and in the like interviews that were done with the young generation and the elders working with the youth. The, the notice of change of weather, ice and snow, observation changes, health status, population of caribou, caribou trend. Affecting who's affect, affected personally and then towards the land, the community level, and the future changes and effects. Scapi Nation has like over a thousand people, population in our community, the Scapi languages are was practically spoken to all, even even in schools. There's a curriculum. At the school that's that does books and and our subsidy hunt, hunting, fishing, and trapping, mostly food. The caribou, beaver, goose, ptarmigan, and berries. Caribou very status. There's our main special status for the Scapi culture of caribou hunting is the great importance. The Scapi have built 
rich and accurate knowledge about the caribou. But now we, we share our thoughts with the Inuits and the Crees. And the changes of the climate, it's the change of, of, of the ice, as you can see in the picture. But they melt fast. Freezes up in different, different, different ways. The ice is really, it thaws in early springs, really early. And the time of the freezing of the lakes and river, they change. And sometimes there are, there's some trails that cannot be used no more because due to the early thaw of the ice, new trails are made sometimes near, near our community. <coughs> and sometimes you hear like ice cracking, then you know when, when, when the ice is thawing using skidoos and now people use like trucks. And uh, observed changes in the caribou population are done with the elders. Like long ago, there were lots of them, like they were covering the hills. It's been seven to six years now that we hadn't had caribou around our area. And in the past, you can see them everywhere, scattered. Now they're scattered over our lands and the trend, trend now is to stay the year, like the George River, they tend to stay in, in the Labrador side now and they used to roam, roam our community, near our community, the lakes. Now they it takes longer to have a caribou hunt, they're far away and there's a decrease of consumption and because uh, of the change of the caribou migrations and now we have to use sometimes push planes for for caribou hunting. Even the, the they, they ever see the change of the, the thickness, the, the body condition of the caribou and the uh, in the bones and the, the infection of par parasites. The fur of the caribou is now thinner. The body weight of the caribou is reduced. Caribou are less healthy. Sometimes they have like to, they indicate the virus that they have cancer or other or other sickness. And. There's a change of consumption. The caribou meat tastes different than, than before. It was tasted better before. People have more careful about the meat they're eating. Decreasing caribou hunting means that people are relying more on st st store bought food today. And they see the changes that affected their, their, their body. Now there are like social environmental changes on the caribou. There's outfitting camps between our, our community and, and the Kujwak. They're, the caribou are avoiding the camps and roaming more in, into the north. And for the mining company too, the drilling is not too bad, but but it still affects them, but the blasting, you can feel the blasting. Now they have methods to reduce the noise. And, and this is what, uh, what we plan to do and take actions. Like we have part of workshops for the elders and the community. And we try to work with the mining companies create a monitoring and environment of officers 
to work with the elders and and tr using traditional knowledge in our territory and our programs, what and how and when and who to target, to have a tar to target to work with and to follow up on climate change indicators too. This is what they use for uh, environmental officers that they recently trained. It's a cyber track, it's a GPS. That practically every, everything's there. For, and there were three Escapi young, young adults that were trained. And this was, this is was for the Woodland Caribou in the Labrador site. And there have been, like I said, like I mentioned before, there were school curricula on climate change and caribou in, in the lessons plans that are in units on some kind of safety impacts, research, and what can, like, what can, can be done about it. Like, 